Hello everybody and I am sorry for the mix-up but I'm telling you it's not my fault it's not the first time that YouTube does this it actually a lot of times I mean every time pretty much when I uh, schedule an event I have to first schedule the hour and then the day because if I schedule first the day after I post the hour it brings it back to today so I don't know I'm I reported it to them it's not the first time but they are just I think they are growing too big to be efficient anymore anyway uh, hi toots what you doing in the ER hi Francis hi Isabel hi Judy hi Elaine hi Sharon yay share Australia is online yay so um, I'm going to explain to you how to do the spine using fabric. I've been looking for my fabric to be able to show you. The only way that I can show you would be with cheesecloth and that's not really good. But uh, essentially what you need to do is to get a strip. First measure how big your spine should be. Then cut a strip exactly in perfect dimension then then you can place it uh, generally speaking you wouldn't find a tile as long as a book as a journal so your best bet is to place it on uh, aluminum foil and pretty much brush it all over with uh, liquid clay and you can either get colored liquid clay or you can color it yourself I would recommend for this kind of stuff just put some um, copper mica powder in the clay in the translucent clay and it will color properly and then um, you can put it in the oven and once it is done you simply put you have to put <coughs> three lines of glue one here one here and one here but what I'm going to show you because uh, by the end of February cost clay will start selling by what I understand to the public so I'm going to sh we are going to do a cost clay thing here and the other thing that I'm going to do and unfortunately I did a boo-boo I'm gonna have to order another old silver because this morning I had a live with my sponsors and I have no idea how I closed my old silver wax but I cannot open it anymore uh, my hands are really bad so first of all what I'm going to do is to get these with a layer of wax because even if it's going to get um, uh, whatchamacallit baked it's going to still need uh, it it bonds much better when there is some wax uh, before you bake. Give me just a second. I'm looking for my tool here. So always when you need to put uh, wax in very tiny spaces, m I always recommend use these sculpting tools with the silicone rubber tip. They work the best and two of them work the best one is the one that's completely conical pointy and the other one is the one that's flattened and why is it so good to use them because you can apply perfectly the wax it's much better than trying it with a brush and also it's very easy to clean with um, a paper towel moistened in alcohol and pardon my fingernails but I just didn't have time for fingernails and besides I broke one I cut one actually I didn't notice what I was doing and it got cut like this and now you can see how why I'm saying that me cutting my fingernails hurts because they are so far the quick is so far out so let's do a little bit the main thing will be these pipes and remember what I told you the last time just make these pipes exactly like these only on a smaller scale so they're going to be iron instead of silver 
but it's still okay. And you can do a perfect job with the silicone sculpting tool because you can go if you hear any anything that is Finnegan playing with his track balls because I told you wherever I go he has to come with me so he's trying to get himself busy it's preferable to him being at my feet and then starting to chew on my socks out of pure boredom and as you can see they look exactly like steam pump pipes because that's the whole idea as I said uh, in the previous two lives steampunk has to have something related to the steam technology and in it you can because the steam technology had the peak uh, during the Victorian era you can also add some satiny stuff leather stuff lace stuff but and whatever gears you you place they need to look like industrial gears like factory gears not like clock work gears because that is clockwork punk it's not steampunk anymore it is a fairly common mistake to name something because not a lot of people know about the difference so you'll see a lot of times clockwork punk advertises steampunk even if it is not steampunk okay so you can see it's dirty and even without alcohol you can still clean it but it's the best to do it with alcohol okay so then of course I'm going to use you actually made one of these hi Liana hi Susan that's awesome and then for these I'm going to simply use my finger for the top and then use the little sculpting tool for the whatever I cannot reach of the sides. But I wanted to do this live not ahead of time because I thought that you you would like to see how it comes together looking like metal. And these I was going to do them with iron, not with silver anyway, because they need to look like. And But you can do them with uh, aged brass. If you don't have the art alchemy ones, the best that I, su I can suggest is the Gilders paste in the German silver color. That would look the best as aged stuff it will look kind of like these um, gears so let's refine a little bit this here What you doing? Did you get scared of something? And I noticed that a lot of people said that Finnegan is big now. Well, he did grow up a lot, but he's not really big. If you have seen the photo with him cuddling with Connor, you can figure out that he's not that big. But uh, usually when I get him in front of the camera here he's very close to the camera that's why he looks much bigger than he actually is so 
So you kind of need to go all the way in, especially on these. But it's essentially at these little joints that you need to because your finger will not reach properly here then you can rub with your finger to make it be a little bit <laughs> yeah Connor is is not as much of a giant as other the pure main coons but yeah he is quite big Let me try not to mess up this one too. Uh. Okay, and then the next thing that I'm going to do is to make some corners here. Now, when it comes to corners, of course we can do there are all kinds of textures and i'm going to show you how to do one using a texture and how to do one if you don't have a texture so So yeah, this would be your best bet for corners. And of course, the uh, IOD molds have all kinds of other things. But this would be your best <coughs> your best uh, bet to do how Susan said, <laughs> something really polished. But remember that these are essentially they are resin textures. So you need to make sure that your clay is quite soft. And I'm going to use some graphite. And I'm going to get part of this and part of this. So in order to get a proper... Yeah, it doesn't work. I even tried those jaw thingies that I have to open jars and I couldn't open it. Okay, so I made it into a cylinder. And I make sure that I don't put the folded to be on the top and then press really really strong here you can even use a wax paper or a cosmetic sponge to make sure that you went all the way in because the mold is so deep what is this It's like a piece of wire. I worked on stuff. <laughs> and then remember the pivoting blade to get the excess. I'll show you on the next one in slow motion how to use that. And then do like this until you see that it comes off on, on the edges. And there we have one. And let's do the other one. Again, I'm going to make a roll. Just make sure that you press it real hard so it won't have air inside. And then I'm putting it, making sure that the fold line is not there. Again, press really hard. And then the pivoting blade, this is Lisa Pavelka's thing. 
and it's perfect for satin slice. You hold here and then you very slightly lift just a little bit but you keep holding it here and you go like this and there we go perfect see it's absolutely perfectly level and then once again I'm going to do this to make sure that it comes off without any problem there we go now I'm going to put these together so they would form a corner and my best bet is as you can see here so where's my glasses but this is if you want to be fancy so I'm going to cut it right at this flourish and the same on this side to give the impression of and then <coughs> <coughs> simply press it together a little bit of course I could have gotten shorter ones these are too long so I'm going to shorten them without destroying this would be my best choice and then you simply place it on the corner here and after the first bake you can put some uh, backing on it but you first want to place the the top of course you you need to put some bacon bond there before placing it but that's all you do you simply get these together and um actually there is hold on let me get hold of it let me find it there is a makings that has a pretty corner let's try that one too and then I'll show you how to make a couple without any kind of texture this one is a little bit more difficult to work with because it is uh, plastic and I have all kinds of crap in it but it is this one and I think that this one is flourish hold on give me just a second and I'll link you with polyclay play I think it's in the push mold series yeah it's the push mold floral and then there is one more and I will show you that you can use for this kind of stuff that is called borders but let me give you the link to it this is the link to the makings push molds and from the selection there you choose either this one is flourish floral flourish let me look once again uh, floral and then the other one is borders this one is borders and uh, you with the borders you do the same thing I would probably choose this one the ropey one 
because it can be cut perfectly to create a corner and then you have this one too that looks very uh, metallic -y like for frames but let's do the floral corner and I'll show you your best bet is this clay is a little bit too firm I need a clay that is a little bit softer your best bet is to work with slightly softer clay I know that my black should be softer so let me do it with black instead machine too loud do you want me to mute this hi Fran because I can mute the microphone when I'm working with the machine if it's too loud okay so first I'm going to fold it in two and make sure I have no here and this is the one right here in the corner and essentially it's pretty much the same thing only that you have to be careful and not press too hard because you may deform the plastic and then you won't be able to use your roller on these you'll only be able to use your fingers it's a little bit harder to work with and even so you might have some issues um, I'm showing you both ways of dealing with it and then again you can try the, to slice it off the, um, the pivoting blade works only on rubber or silicone molds As you can see, they are way much harder to work than with the cool tools. And then once you get it, you can pretty much make a decoupage. To get it properly. then everything that's extra you can use your exacto blade and you can do this really nice and fine I'm just showing you various not going to do it all super fine right now but you use it in pretty much the same way you place it on the corner here and then after you bake it the first time you place another thing there uh, then if you want to go simple industrial pretty much all you do let me get my black black you know your problem is when you work I'm gonna show you what happens when you when you work with this kind of plastic and with stuff that's a little bit too thin what will happen if you put the plastic up when you press on it this is what happens when you press on it you deform the lines 
so with the plastic ones as I said what I prefer to do I pretty much uh, do a little bit of hit and miss until I get the perfect size for my or almost perfect size and then I can come and shave it and get the proper thing out see but uh, don't press on the plastic down because you're going to deform your stuff anyway so Essentially you get it on the thickest setting and then you can have you'll have all of it on the same length then we are going to grab this and make it into the back Try to find a 45 degree angle. Reverse one of them. Put it together and of course you first put some bacon bond on the back here. And then you put this as backing. You will have to place a little piece of um, aluminum foil here. So that the clay doesn't get stuck to the first sheet of paper and then you will have to do one double so after you bake this this has to be baked first the base when you make this kind of stuff you will need one double as you can see i doubled it and it has to be the width of how much the backing um, is over the actual edge stay there I'm showing stuff stay there and then again do the 45 degrees thing and you first place this because you want to bring the the first thickness will be the thickness of the cover itself and then the second thickness will bring to level with whatever you're gonna put there and then your next thing here it's a an issue because you won't be able to do that 45 degrees cut and turn roll over let me grab a clean wrap in order to make it look metallic and all that and pretty and all that you can actually put just one here just one line instead of two just to bring it to the same level just to make it a little bit prettier you just put one line instead of two if you want to make both of them all the lines look pretty like this because this will be your base pretty much stay there okay so your next thing will be to just use your blade and why you use the cling wrap to make it look nice and uh, scalloped And you'll have to cut pretty much six. You'll 
have to go back and redo the cuts on some because the blade might not cut all the way through the depends on your blade but anyway after you cut them all nicely group them three by three and then cut the 45 degree angle then cut one make it shorter one two three they have the first one of course this one this the longest one has to be pretty much you'll have to measure ahead of time i didn't do any measuring it's just eyeballing but pretty much goes like this and then you do the second why do i have only i thought i cut three i guess i didn't i'm gonna just Okay, and the same thing, put them together. You don't actually have to separate them. I don't know why I separated them, but you want this uh, dip between them to be quite noticeable. So again, do the 45 degree angle, and you might have to measure to make sure that they are both. It's better done on a grid tile. I know whisper I'm busy you can wait and then it's not well cut go Sorry, I don't... I'm gonna tell you like I told my neighbor. They're like, oh, why are you yelling at that poor dog? He's freaking deaf. So if I don't yell at him, he doesn't hear me. Okay, so you do something pretty much like this. And as you can see, of course, it's not very well done uh, right now. You have to be a little bit more careful. But this is the, the whole idea. It will look... Uh, like pieces of hardware when you put it like this and you don't have to worry about this either your other thing that you can do you can grab some bake and bend clay and go around your house and whenever you find because everybody has framed stuff in their house and whenever you find something on a frame that you like use the bake and bond to grab the corner then bake it and you'll have a nice texture to do a frame for your journals or several nice textures it depends on how many frames you have like from what I have right just in this room uh, for example I said that I was going to do stuff on my frames but I never got around to do it but you can get quite a bit of textures from the frames in your house so this would be how to, you need to put it's it's the best thing to put some uh, corners another way to make a corner would be and that is even more um if you want if you don't want to make a that complicated of a corner let me get this back through the machine and you will need a very thin yeah, bake and bend, not bake and bond. Bake and bend. It's the clay that bends. It's not as good as cast, cast clay, but it's perfect for textures. And by the way, the cast clay is beautiful for textures because it's flexible. And you can even make textures that go through the machine with your clay. Okay. 
So grab some clay on a fairly thin thickness. I'm going to use a six. And the way that you do it, you can actually, I suggest that you bake it first. I mean, after you prepare it, you bake it first and then you put it on here because you want it to look like metal. Okay, and there are some uh, let me try and find it. Okay, so the way that you can make it look really metallic and you'll see what I'm trying to make here. So first use a rounded square. Of course you can cut all this by hand if your hand is sturdy enough. And then once you did this, you go one more time, just make sure that you make it perfectly parallel to the previous cut. And then very, very gently so that you cut, you might come back and finish it with your exacto knife. to create a bracket and then once you create it what you want to do is hold on a second grab a you can grab a straw if you want that will still work but if you have these zitty bitty doodles grab one of them whichever you think fits the best so this you cut it directly on a on a tile on a baking tile or on a mirror tile or whatever too so that you can lift it and put it directly in the oven and then get this you don't cut you just make an impression don't you don't cut all the way just make an impression okay there we go like this and then your best bet is to actually use a screwdriver I don't have a screwdriver here so I'm going to just draw it pretty much but your best bet is uh, get a Phillips screwdriver and I didn't get the proper one and just push no, no, I cannot find my most favorite thing I'm gonna use this and just push it in the middle but if you don't just find something that's fairly flat and will let you imitate like you just got a screw there not doing a great job right now so and then your best bet is to put this let me go grab the other one So because you have this here and you have the gears, there are three colors in the Art Alchemy uh, metallic line that would fit. One of them is the white gold and I'll show all three of them to you, how they, what's the difference. This would be the white gold and it makes it look pretty much very similar to the German silver. And of course it gets, once it's baked and hardened, and you uh, what is wrong with my hands and you buff it nicely with the cloth it will look very very metallic and then 
the second one would be the vintage gold that is a more subdued goldish if you remember I used it on this it's more brassy and then the third color is the aged brass uh, now it's called aged brass but I'm gonna be very honest with you it doesn't really look aged at all it just looks brass and very strong brassy not at all aged so it's pretty much up to you what you choose and I'm going to kind of go over them with my finger to mix them so it would look a little bit more refined but once after you bake it and remember if you don't want it to start warping place uh, place it on a tile because you don't care how the back is going to look then so you'll have the tile the piece then put a piece of wax paper or printing paper on top of it then another tile so that it would be sandwiched and it will not warp because it's so thin if you don't put anything heavy perfectly straight and heavy on top of it it's not going to look good and then you simply glue it here and it will look just like a bracket and by the way this is how you make uh, brackets and you can add some more brackets wherever you want <coughs> so as you can see looks very industrial very metallic -y. and all the other things that I told you about those get glued remember that we had a lot of gears and things those get glued after the last bake after the last bake I'm uh, everything gets glued here and also I'm going to put very tiny pieces of steampunky stuff here and then cover with resin and uh, I might look because I think that I have some anchors and tiny ships or something because the idea was this to look pretty much like the airplane or a ship um, window but pretty much this is how you do it and I showed you various variations of the corners to put this is the easiest one and all that you need is the a square rounded corner squat cutter now I had some here laying around for ages And I thought it would be just perfect for this. But yeah, with Casclay coming on the market, I kind of foresee the texture makers are going to have a kit because I don't know <laughs> why, but I can see uh, Claire's sharing textures. Not saying that it's legal and <laughs> that it's nice, but I'm saying that we don't have a lot of money, so when we you have texture plates that are like 18 bucks and 20 bucks oh well the thing is that it's a good clay and yes i will show you something made in a while something made with cost clay <coughs> So you want for this, you want the medium soft. <laughs> a 
and you want it fairly thin. I got it on a six because the thinner it is, the more flexible it is, and that's your problem here at the at the spine of the journal because you keep opening, so anything that's gonna be here is gonna be prone to cracking. So you want something that would be flexible. That's why I told you on how to make the fabric and um, liquid clay thing, because liquid clay is flexible, and if you put fabric inside, it's not going to. It might crack a little bit, but it's going to look like aged, not uh, anything else. So, this is good. And the uh, cast clay, the medium soft is a little sticky. It's actually stickier than uh, Fimo when it's well conditioned. But what you need to do is to get, and you can try with bacon band as well, because that one is fairly flexible. It's not as flexible as cast clay, definitely. And if we want to give it some kind of texture, I would go for the leather, or you can just go with it, ma look, making it look pretty much like metal, but you can add some corrosion after you place it in, you put it in place. So, first thing first, I am going to And get some bacon bond here. Now I've never done this with costly before, so I don't know if it's going to fit. I, I presume also that female leather might work, but as hard as, as it is right now to get female leather in the US. I'd rather not, I do have some female leather, but I'd rather not waste it for this. I have some stuff in plan to make with it. Hopefully, hopefully. Okay, so you place it pretty much flush with the stuff that you made here already. And then I'm going to bring it over a little bit so that I can place more bacon bond here and on this side. Sorry, I'm trying not to touch the camera. And of course one needs to remove the lid. Do, 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 do. And then gently fold it, make sure that you don't catch air. super soft and think that I kept it uncovered for like a month and it's still super soft but uh, this is from the first batches so in the meantime it looks much better and then do a proper so this is not what you're going to get when they start selling it, it's going to be much better than what I'm showing you here. And 
and you don't want to leave any on the inside so nicely trim the excess here and here again bring it over And then what I would do, I would uh, practically bake it first because otherwise it's going to be a little bit difficult to, but you can give it some. And if you do this, it may look like leather, it may look like you can make it look like metal, it's completely up to you but I suggest that you first bake it and then you apply some if you want to make it look like leather some brown and black the way that I did it here acrylic and then bake it for another five minutes to ten minutes or so and that way and another thing when you bake it put something on, underneath so it wouldn't touch this side just baking sitting on a, a, a cutter a metal cutter is just perfect and uh, I'm afraid after Valentine's we'll do the closing because I really, I'm sorry, but I really need my uh, shot in the muscles of the back. The one that I got in September wore off pretty much end of January. So it's killing me. I really cannot sit for longer than, even less than I used to be able to. But I promise you, I'll show you how to make the, the closures with magnets that look exactly like one of those old um, things. So thank you so much. I'll see you tomorrow and we'll, I'll explain and I'll give you examples of how to make various Valentine's Day jewelry pieces in all kinds of styles. Because I thought that that beats me showing you how to do one thing. If I would explain the design principles on several styles of Valentine jewelry, you would be way more, uh, you'd gain way more. Thank you, James. I'm actually not doing very good right now. I need to go lay down. But I hope that you, you liked it. And as I said, we'll continue after Valentine's Day with this part. I, I hope that you have enough material right now to make your own. And um, hopefully next time when we do it, I'll have already this made and just show you on the old one that I messed up how to make it. And I'll just show you how to glue other things and it will be pretty much done. But I'll just show you the last things. So thank you so much. Don't forget to leave me the thumbs up and to share my channel and thank you for being my faithful faithful subscribers and i'll see you all tomorrow at 12 30 central okay thank you have a wonderful wonderful night and a great weekend goodbye i love you all